Welcome to conference this week as we prepare for the Chinese New Year. So last week we were reading our annual books, Clear Your Clutter with Feng Shui and the Anatomy of the Spirit, and encouraging all of you to look around your life and see where you have um, a flow of energy and where you might have blockages and grantis in your life. And we always start as yogis with ourself, you know, looking at um, where in my life, uh, where in my body I feel like there's uh, some blockages, some emotional issues, or where in my life things are moving. And that's one of the primary reasons that we do Ashtanga Yoga is this is a pranic practice and we study the nadis, we study the grantis, we study the vayus, and, and every time we do a pose we try to do it with good form so we get more breath through it and we realize that being here and breathing and moving that prana in different areas of our body really uh, gives us vitality, it gives us health. That's why we keep coming back despite the grantis and challenges, right? Um, and so then this time of year, we extend that to um, the other um, places in our life. And we, we understand as yogis that everything has prana. Um, this room has prana and our relationships with each other have prana and our homes have prana. So Karen starts with, uh, I love this book so much. It's such a great little read um, and also review every year to start with a bagua of your house and you move all the way through the bagua of your colon and everything in between this time of year, just kind of looking at um, where you might have blockages, where there's clutter. So just the easy one for me, and I'm sure for all of you, is just looking at our life where there's um, things that are just piling up and um, getting, being cluttered. So for me, for example, this year I, um, what was working on back when Diwali was happening, I was working on changing my office and my puja room in my house. And because of all the changes I made, I wound up, this is sort of a Midwest thing, I think, but I created what we call, back when I was younger, a junk room, where literally there were boxes of journals and things from the shala and just, just filled with stuff. And uh, this last weekend, I cleared it out. And, put it all away in places and threw things away and walking into that room now just has this good energy and it feels so good. It feels very liberating when you let go and give away things and clear things up. And then I cleaned a junk drawer that made me feel really good too. So, um, and again, there was um, years in the past where it was a pantry and it kind of, when we, we realize when we do um, clear blockages and things in our life that are just old and um, not been cared for, it, it opens up energy for us. So the year I cleared my pantry, I actually had a big shift in my diet as well. One year it was a, a relationship that was really important to me, but I realized was not serving me, more of a drain of my energy. So um, I might kind of move that relationship to a more of an outer part of my relationships. So um, one of the examples I wanted to guys, give you guys this week was from our yoga practice, our Ashtanga Eight Limbs, is to understand a little deeper about um, the, the science of this and also the psychology of this and, and our commitment to it as yogis. So in the Ashtanga Eight Limbs, there's yamas and niyamas. What are the yamas? Yamas are kind of like how you show, the moral code or how you show up in the world, right? It's in my translation. And then the niyamas are, the niyamas are, yeah, it's more about your relationship with yourself and how you treat yourself. So within the yamas, there is something called a parigraha. Parigraha means hoarding or collecting. To be free from hoarding is a parigraha. This is from um, Iyengar's book, uh, Light on Yoga. It is thus but another facet of asteya, which is non-stealing. Just as one should not take things one does not really need, so one should not hoard or collect things one does not require. 
or use. And I love to bring this up this time of the year because it takes us to a whole different level when we think of the things in our life that we keep. And Karen Kingston kind of gets into this psychology of like, why we keep things? You know, I keep them because it was expensive. I keep it because it used to look good on me and maybe someday it will look good on me. I keep it because it was sentimental. Someone gave it to me. It was very precious that I, that I love. But we hold on to things that we're not using and they become part of our grunties, part of our clutter. And, and, and this time of year is, is good for us to look and see, like, what in my life am I hoarding? What in my life am I keeping that's not being used? Because that is part of the steya for the yogi. We believe that if we have things we're not using that someone else could use, it really is a form of stealing. And, and I, I love to think of that, and a couple examples I just want to give you guys to kind of bring it home for you is, um, I have a lot of yoga clothes. This happened, you guys, I buy yoga clothes and I wind up being like, if I buy two pairs of pants, there's one pair I like and one pair that just looks awful on me, right? But you keep it because someday it might look good on me, which is funny to think, right? What's going to make it look good on me that didn't the first time I put it on? But we do that. And so we have the things we love and that we wear and then we have the things that just sit around and we maybe get them out sometimes and think about them. But one year, I, I try to every year give my clothes away that I don't use, but one year in particular, um, there was uh, two beautiful women that I loved that worked in the juice bar next to our yoga studio, and I asked them, hey, I think some of the stuff that doesn't look good on me might look great on you. Can I give it to you guys, and if you want it, you can keep it, and if not. And they were very excited about that, and I brought them the clothes, and they wound up keeping it all, pretty much. And the fun thing about it, was the next day I saw them wearing some of my clothes and then the next month and then all throughout the year they were wearing the stuff that it made me so happy to see them wearing it. It looked so beautiful and it made me realize that when I, when I hoard, when I keep things, that they really are not being used. And there's an energy to that. So there was this really beautiful energy seeing them wearing this clothes that brought me like liberation and freedom, but also happiness. Um, and this year, it was a year of letting go of a lot of things uh, for me personally. Um, one kind of fun thing that I want to share with you that I gave away was not something that didn't look good on me or we talk about only keeping the things that we love, uh, but this year I wound up giving away something or selling something that I really loved, which was um, my uh, 92 Jeep Renegade, which had the Shala logo on it. And I love this Jeep so much, and, but I realized that I wasn't driving it that much. And it, it bothered me that I wasn't driving it that much. So then I would like to, okay, this month I'm gonna drive it more. And I would try to get in there and drive it more. I'm like, you know, and I just had that feeling like if I, if I really can't use this, it feels wrong to keep it. And so the long and short of that story was I went through a whole period, like a month, where it's like, sell it, don't sell it, sell it, don't sell it. And then I wound up selling it to someone here whose daughter absolutely loves it. She gave it a name. I can't remember the name she gave the Jeep. Um, but she drives all over uh, St. Clemente in her Jeep, and, it, and she just absolutely loves it. And every time I see him, I ask how the Jeep is. And, but I realized, again, like that was just something I actually loved, but I realized it was sort of a hoarding for me to not to be really using it. And so someone else could use it. Someone else could really love it. So this is a time in our life um, with the Chinese New Year uh, where I want all of you to just, just kind of hold that thought and look around your life and see like the little things that you can clean up and clear up and also the bigger things that really do impact our happiness and the way we show up for life. Um, and this, for, for those of you in our extended community, the Chinese New Year is on our calendars as Friday, on our Western calendars, on our yoga calendar, it's Thursday. So I think you guys can really enjoy Thursday night, like the eve of, and prepare for um, the Chinese New Year and clear and clean some things up so you feel good when you wake up Friday morning. And then we will have a puja here on Sunday. So those of you that do puja with us as well to um, either on Friday or Sunday with us to light a candle and set some intention for your new year based on the good energy you feel from cleaning up some things. So I want to finish with a very simple but profound <coughs> quote by Henry David Thoreau. He said, the price of anything is the amount of life you exchange for it. It's beautiful and powerful. Think about that. Namaste.